One of the most frequent questions that I get asked is what picture profile do you use? And the simple answer is, I use a bunch of different ones for different reasons. Picture profiles can be extremely useful tools in achieving the shots that you want, but I do think that there seems to be some confusion about what they do and what they're for. By the end of this video, you should have a basic understanding of what a picture profile is and when you might wanna use them or not use them so that you can choose a picture profile that makes sense for you, your specific needs, and for the shots that you're trying to get. And yes, I will tell you which picture profiles I use and why I use them. Okay, let's start with a basic understanding. And for those of you who are more advanced, I am going to be simplifying this a little bit to make it easier to understand. So try your hardest not to explode in the comment section. Picture profiles actually make for more work in the end, but they give you more options to how your picture is going to turn out. It's kind of like coffee. Hear me out. Not using a picture profile is like grabbing a cheap, giant batch brew drip coffee from a corner store. It's definitely still coffee and it gets the job done, but you don't have any control over the flavor of it or how they made it. Sometimes that's just all you need and the convenience is what you were looking for. Using a picture profile is more like being able to choose your beans, your roast, your method of brewing, the brewing temperature, and allowing you to bring out all the flavors that you want in the coffee that you can't control when you grab a random cup of joe. This is obviously a lot more work because you have to make all those decisions. You have to go through the process of making it yourself, but in the end, you can get exactly the cup of coffee that you had wanted. I guess that would make hiring someone to do the color grade like going to a really fancy coffee shop where they have more options. Now I just want more coffee. Anyway, the bottom line here is that with a picture profile, what you're really doing is trying to get more control and preserve the little details that you might want later when it comes to your color grade. If you were to look at a clip with no picture profile versus a log profile, the standard picture looks done, whereas the log has a long ways to go before it looks great. Okay, so then why would you want to use a picture profile? Well, let's say for example, you're shooting a scene where there is a lot of dynamic range, meaning that there are super bright parts and super dark parts, all in the same shot. With the standard profile, AKA no picture profile, you have a choice to make. You can expose the shot where you can see the darkest parts, but you blow out the highlights, or you can save the brightest parts, but have the dark parts so that they are hard to see and you lose detail. As the camera takes in the information that it sees on the sensor, it decides what it thinks a done image looks like with basic contrast and saturation. There's only so much information that the camera can store on the card depending on the format that you're shooting. However, when you shoot in a picture profile like a log profile, the camera applies specific parameters to the information that it gathers to essentially squish more information into a small space. This way we can try to keep the information in both the bright and dark parts of the picture. But the problem is that it looks super flat and not realistic at all, so we have to stretch that picture back out in the color correcting process. This gives you more flexibility with the picture because you've captured captured more of the information that you may have lost if you weren't using that picture profile. But it doesn't make for a quick turnaround because the picture is very unfinished. Okay, so when should you use a picture profile? Well, this can depend on a couple of things. How much dynamic range is in your scene? If there isn't much dynamic range in the scene and you're not in danger of clipping your blacks or your whites, then you might not need to use a profile at all. Also, how fast do you need to turn around the project? If you shoot in a flat profile like log, you'll need time in post-production to then grade the footage to make it look proper, so factor that in. If you need it turned around fast, maybe the better option is to shoot in a standard profile or no picture profile and sacrifice a bit of the control that you probably wouldn't have time to take anyway. Generally, I like to grade and I'm not usually in a rush to release things, so I shoot in a picture profile to preserve a bit more of the information and have a bit more control. However, when I 
shoot little things for social media that I wanna get around quick, I'll regularly shoot in a standard profile so that I can transfer it directly to my phone and upload without having to grade. It all depends on the project and the lighting for the situation or shot. All that being said, I personally like to use the same picture profile for an entire project to make it easier to match all the shots in the grade rather than having to match a bunch of different profiles together. So back to the original question, which profile do I use? Well, over the past couple of years, I've used four. First off, there's standard, which is no profile, like I said, I use that for when I need a quick turnaround and the convenience is more important than the quality. Second, for a while I shot with Cine 2. This profile is a little bit more flat than the standard profile, but it doesn't look bad straight at a camera. It preserves a bit more of the detail and gives you a bit more to play with, but you could still upload something looking like this and it wouldn't be completely out of whack. Third, I actually replaced most of my Cine 2 shooting situations with HLG3. HLG is a hybrid log gamma, so as the name suggests, it's partially log, but not fully flat like a full log profile. It's nice and easy to grade and it preserves a lot of the highlight detail. And lastly, I shoot using S-Log2 when it's needed in high dynamic range settings. This is the most difficult to correct out of the ones that I use, and especially on the 8-bit formats that are currently offered by Sony. I try not to use it unless I have to. The issue with log and 8-bit is because it squishes the signal so much that you have to stretch it so far back out. And if there isn't enough information in the files, it can start to fall apart when you stretch it back out. Now, a quick disclaimer, this is a very basic look at what picture profiles do and why you might wanna use them, but we're not really going under the hood super deeply. So I do suggest doing some more digging. And if you do have any questions, you can always let me know down in the comments, or if you have a suggestion suggestion for a future video you'd like me to make, you can always head to donadidit.com slash suggestion box to let me know. And if you do want more on this topic, I've left a couple of great videos down pinned in a comment below. And on your way down there, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss out on future tutorials and reviews. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.